Hello and welcome back to this channel. Dear students, today's topic is design issues. We'll discuss different design issues like antenna effect, which is also called plasma induced gate offset damage, then electromigration effect, then crosstalk effect and drain punch through effect. So first, let us talk about the antenna effect. In case of fabrication of CMOS devices, plasma processing is used. So during the plasma processing, it may happen that the wires which are connected to the gate terminal of the MOSFET, then there will be accumulation of charges and such wires acts as an antenna, which is called antenna effect. Another name for this antenna effect is plasma induced gate oxide damage because this effect is related to the uh, plasma which is getting induced. Now I have written few important points. So there is accumulation of charges on the conductor which is connected to the gate terminal of MOSFET. So interconnected wire to the gate terminal acts as an antenna. Then there is a diode which is formed between do drain and source diffusion layers. So this diode starts conducting. This particular effect is called the antenna effect. What is the causes or what is the effect uh, on the total structure? So because of this, the VTS that is threshold level gets shifted. Then there is a degradation in the mobility of charges. And it may happen that in the worst case scenario, there is the gate failure. It will also degrade the current voltage IV characteristics of the device. Now to reduce down this antenna effect, certain steps are required. As I said, the plasma processing is used while uh, fabricating the CMOS device. This plasma processing is used in CMOS for especially etching and uh, deposition process. So reduce down the built up charges. Why this effect is taking place? Because the charges are getting built up in the conductor, which is used as an interconnection to the gate terminal. So reduce down these built up charges by managing or optimizing the plasma processing steps. Then connect a reverse bias diode at the gate terminal so that the accumulated charges will get passed. They will pass through the reverse bias diode. Do remember this reverse bias diode will not affect, will not cause any effect on the normal performance of the device. Then use jumpers. Instead of using the long wires for interconnection, wherever possible, you can use the jumper so that the total uh, length of the wire gets uh, reduced. Second effect is electro migration. This is the effect which is related to the flow of current. That means related to the current density. And because of the large current density, the heat is getting uh, developed. It is getting dissipated. So this particular effect is electro migration effect. It is related to the moment of atoms based on the current flowing through the material. We know that many times there is a high flow of current for a longer time period. That means there is a high uh, flow of current density because of which the heat is getting dissipated and this heat causes the transportation of metal ions. It may cause the short circuit or breaks in the wire in the metal layer. This is the effect which is uh, uh, getting uh, caused uh, due to this electro migration. Then this effect electro migration depends on the temperature, then current, then current density, and it also depends on the crystal lattice structure. To reduce down this electro migration effect, certain steps are required. First is increase the metal width. So if you increase the metal width, then the current density will get reduced and less heat will be dissipated. Then you may reduce the power supply as well as you may reduce the uh, supply frequency and use short wires instead of using the longer wires. Next part is the crosstalk effect. This term crosstalk is related to any unwanted transmission of the signal through the coupling capacitor. We know that the coupling capacitors are used to connect the two stages of a circuit. As shown in this diagram, we are uh, considering two wires, wire one. This wire one is associated with the capacitor C1. So in the bracket, I have written C, C1. Then we are considering another wire which is associated with capacitor C2. This is capacitor C2. Now, if these two wires are separately used, let us say the voltages related to wire uh, one is V1 and voltage related to wire two is V2. 
as i said if these two wires are used separately that means there are two capacitors which are not interlinked with each other then in that case we know the basic equation of capacitor c is q by v where q is the charge on the capacitor v is the voltage applied across the plates of capacitor from this we can simply write q is equals to c into v so if we are considering the separate isolated capacitor then for capacitor c1 we can write q1 is equals to c1 v1 for capacitor c2 we can write q2 is equals to c2 into v2 as i said v1 and v2 are the voltages related to capacitor c1 and c2 respectively then we know that c1 and c2 are the values of the capacitance and q1 and q2 are the are the charges now if you differentiate this equation we know that the derivative of charge is related to current but before that these are the equations if we are considering this as a separate capacitor but these two wires are the part of circuit so they should be connected now for this connection a coupling capacitor is used which is denoted by cc so due to the effect of this coupling capacity equation of charge q1 can be written as c1 v1 plus cc into v2 say equation number 1 very simple q1 is c1 v1 is the original equation but it is connected to wire 2 where the corresponding voltage is v2 through the coupling capacitor cc so i have written c1 v1 plus cc into v2 same way for the capacitor c2 i can write q2 is equals to original equation is c2 v2 but it is connected to wire 1 that is uh, to voltage v1 through the capacitor or by making use of a coupling capacitor cc so i can write cc into v1 say equation 2 now just now i said if you take the derivative of charge then you are getting the equation of current so let us differentiate this equation this current i will denote it by i1 which is same as dq1 upon d2 what i said derivative of uh, this charge is a uh, current so i1 is d by dt of q1 so this equation becomes c1 dv1 by dt plus cc dv2 by dt say equation number 3 same way if you differentiate this equation equation number 2 you will be getting current i2 so i2 is dq2 by dt which is c2 d by dt of v2 plus cc d by dt of v1 say equation number 4 observe these equations both these currents flowing through wire 1 and wire 2 respectively they are dependent on both the voltages v1 as well as v2 so if any one of the voltage is changed then there is a effect on the currents flowing through this wire 1 as well as wire 2 that means there is a effect on the capacitance of this structure as shown in this diagram these two wires are joined by using a coupling capacitor so it will increase the capacitive load of the circuit and it will reduce down the speed of circuit this effect whenever unwanted signals are getting passed from wire 1 to wire 2 through the coupling capacitor is called the crosstalk effect now how to reduce this effect very simple technique if you increase the gap between these two wires then the uh, effect of this uh, crosstalk due to the coupling capacitor will get reduced as well as you may use uh, some additional lines that is vdd or uh, ground line between the uh, signal uh, below the signal lines so this is about the crosstalk effect now the last effect is drain punch through effect this effect is related to the touching of the two depletion regions consider the situation when the drain terminal has high voltage with respect to the source terminal in that case the drain region exceeds and may get enter into the source region so this will cause the flow of current basically the breakdown takes place whenever drain body db stands for drain body and sb source body junction depletion regions that means the depletion region corresponding to drain body and the source body uh, touch with each other then in that case the breakdown takes place as shown in this diagram this is the source side this is the drain uh, side this one is the depletion region related to source side 
this lacquer line indicates depletion region related to dendrite at this point these two depletion region touch with each other and because of which current flows from one side to another side or you may say the break down takes place so this effect is called drain punch through effect there are again two sub categories one is surface punch through uh, this the, in this diagram i have shown these two depletion region touch with each other if they are touching uh, with each other at the surface it is called surface punch through if they are touching with each other i mean if these two depletion regions touch each other below the surface they are called sub surface punch through effect so this is about the drain punch through effect now uh, dear students that's it for today's session so thank you thanks a lot for watching this video